Uh, I'm Paul Lam, the facilitator of the session. Uh, welcome and thanks for coming to the room. It's a special room. Uh, the, the, the time uh, this afternoon is for something so-called uh, poster uh, presentations. It's uh, a bit different from the talks, the parallel talks, because uh, the uh, presenters, first of all, they have got a poster. And if you want, if you have missed looking at the poster, uh, you, you can find the link to the poster they made now in the chat room, right? Joe, have you got that in the chat room now? Yeah, I just yes. hand it out. Yes. So for those who are here and you haven't looked at the poster yet, you can follow the link in the chat room to look at the poster. And in this session, we would like to mimic uh, the face-to-face -face poster session in conferences. So that means uh, I expect there will be a lot of discussion, a lot of uh, you can, uh, and also uh, we would limit the presentation time to a very short time, only a few minutes, because in a real poster session, people come along and chat. So we would like to see, I don't know whether it works in online, or, uh, now totally online, whether it works or not, but we want uh, to try as much as possible to make it a very interactive, uh, very, uh, uh, yes, a very interactive session. So let's uh, begin. Uh, and uh, we have originally, we have po four posters in this session and one of them, the first one, uh, cannot make it. So we'll start from Ms. Yilin Sim from okay. Singapore University of Social Science. So I give you a few minutes. Uh, do you like to uh, uh, show your screen now? Oh, yes, I'll be sharing the yep. poster. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Right. So um, good afternoon, everybody. So I'm um, Eileen from Singapore University of Social Sciences. And uh, today the presentation for my poster, I'll just be sharing about how um, no one can incorporate VR, virtual reality, VR technology um, into training for event logistics. But uh, today's focus will be on how this VR technology will actually work as an emerging educational tool, uh, specifically for adult learning. So, um, andragogy is the term associated with adult learning. So, uh, we're going to talk about how it can be enhanced through a VR technology. So, in this modern um, technology era, VR has actually become an increasingly convenient and helpful tool to convey information and acquire knowledge. And um, with adult learners, they actually appreciate interactive learning. So uh, this is something which VR actually provides them with because it creates a 3D virtual um, world for the learners to actually conduct their own learning. So research has shown that, um, sorry, I'm just gonna zoom it out. Um, research has shown that actually many adult learners are less willing to um, undergo training because uh, it's inconvenient and there is a very dull and mundane routine of listening to lectures and reading off just notes and slides, um, actually even if uh, what we're doing now. So um, adult learners through VR can actually assess the learning materials uh, anywhere and anytime at their own convenience simply through a mobile phone, a laptop, or the VR headgear itself. So um, they can learn at their own pace conveniently. They can move forward as they deem fit when they feel that you know, they have understood what is going on. So they actually feel a sense of achievement and independence through the self-directed learning. And um, the visual aids actually provides them with the chance to actually learn by doing things hands-on. So they get to experience, they get to get a real experience rather than a perceived one. And they are allowed to make mistakes and learn without causing actually detrimental consequences. Because there are things that um, 
as you you learn better as you do and in real life if you actually learn in i would say uh in real life learning if you make mistakes things can happen you may have very bad outcomes and very uh severe consequences as well so um VR also has the advantage of providing learning and training under undesirable uh, situations, such as for now, the reason why we are conducting this, this conference through Zoom is also because of COVID-19. So in times of COVID-19 period, where social distancing is required, you know, physical lectures with large numbers uh, of learners are not recommended, you know, VR actually gives the opportunity for adult learners to continue with their training and continue to learn in their own space without having to mix around with others. So it actually has a very uh, high advantage in this sense. So um, VR is actually, uh, we'll consider an emerging educational technology because it can actually potentially provide learning at a comparatively low cost for companies by eliminating the need of them sending multiple employees for training at one time. You know, currently, um, companies, when they send employees for training, they'll have to send them in groups. But when they are sent in groups, you know, productivity uh, and work is actually indirectly, indirectly impacted because, you know, you cannot actually do both things at the same time. So you actually, uh, through the use of VR, you can actually maintain productivity and increase the efficiency and effectiveness of both um, adult learning through uh, training as well as your um, work productivity itself. Yeah, so uh, actually that's about it, uh, about uh the my poster itself so maybe just uh we can open up for a q a session yes thank you very much yeah. thank you very interesting project uh by the way we have all all the three posters uh, in this session are very interesting they are about uh very advanced uh the, the new technologies that are being used in education uh, many of them are vr ar uh, things so that's and that's that's why we group them into one section so now uh the, the, the next one uh professor chen uh professor chen has a video right so uh joe so i'll just stop sharing yeah. for now yes okay mm. okay so i will share uh his video right now please right thank you joe okay. mm. yes. Hello everyone. Um, as you know that the COVID-19 pandemic um, has caused the suspension of many in-class lecturing and outdoor field trips. So this platform is uh, an interactive platform that offers uh, the opportunity for off-site field investigation and to turn the crisis of um, teaching learning into an innovative opportunity for teaching um, education. This platform consists of um, two parts uh, of, um, the, uh, of, of tools. The first part is what you see on the, um, uh, on the screen, a VR platform that we filmed different locations on Yimtinzi Island. And this one is actually a 360 degrees of um, uh, images. And combining these images, we have um, you know, tried to film uh, three different types of locations uh, on the island, including um, Hakka cultural um, features, including religious sites, and also the ecological um, characteristics of uh, the island. We can actually, ju not just using the map, but an arrow to allow you to go into different places uh, of the Indian Sea. And uh, in, some, in some sites, we can actually um, use the functions such as uh, uh, pop-up questions for students to have discussion in class. 
And the second part of the platform is an AR function. We have developed a mobile app that is available for uh, both um, Android and iOS systems. Students are allowed to download the app and scan their mobile phone, uh, you know, with um, the images on the um, AR booklet. And from that um, you know, process, students can actually view the videos uh, about Yim Tin Zi stories uh, on their smartphone and also see some um, you know, 3D images uh, of the St. Joseph Chapel and also the um, um, Saw Pen. And the results of their you know, feedback uh, shows a generally um, positive um, you know, uh, responses from the students. Uh, specifically, they like uh, uh, the VR platform um, uh, to visualize um, the site for them. Comparatively speaking, uh, the students like the VR part more than AR part. Um, study from home now is the trend that we have to, um, you know, um, try to accommodate um, in the process of teaching and learning, especially um, during the pandemic. But post post pandemic period would also need some more options for on-site field trip in addition to uh, what we can offer for these kinds of virtual field trip. Um, finally, I would like to thank uh, the TDLEG, uh, the funding um, from CHK. Um, yeah, that's the uh, video. Because of the <clears throat> time limits, I can only produce a three-minute video, but we can um, discuss more during the Q&A section. Thank you. Okay, Paul, you, you didn't unmute yourself. Oh, yeah. yeah, sorry. So it's the second poster we have uh, now. And how about uh, Jonathan, your time? Okay, thank you. Okay, so um, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, my name is uh, Jonathan, um, and I'm uh, uh, presenting this poster from uh, NIE NTU, uh, but I also teach at SUSS and uh, run um, um, XR Media Lab at the university. And in, in recent months, um, you know, VR and XR and MR and all the Rs has become really a big talking point. Um, and a lot of uh, people are rushing to create content, especially with the COVID-19 period, trying to create new content that people can access um, in the relative safety of their own homes, for example. So a lot of people imagine it's kind of a magic bullet that can solve a lot of uh, uh, learning problems or access issues. But how many of you have actually really tried VR? Um, and what is your personal experience trying the technology? I think many people will tell me that Oh, you know, I, I did it. It wasn't very comfortable. It was a little bit heavy. Um, you know, there was some dizziness, some motion sickness. And, and you hear a lot of negative feedback. But there is no denying that the, there is a lot of potential for the technology in the space of education and training. If you look at the uh, reports in the media in, in the last uh, few months, you see even in Singapore, the police force is using VR for training of, uh, of shooting. Um, and um, crime scene investigation. You have um, the Alzheimer's Disease Association using VR for training of frontline workers as well as for caregivers. Um, and the, one of the biggest success stories is the US ski team. Uh, in the last Pyeongchang Winter Olympics, they used 3D to, to map the entire mountain uh, of the ski slope. And the US team had a, you know, a whole couple of years to train on it and get used to it. And when it came to the competition, they got the gold medal. So there are many proven case studies of success of VR. Um, so a lot of people are now rushing out towards creating a lot of VR content. But in this rush, we also see a lot of low quality content. And there's really no consideration for comfort um, of the experience. So the research, research question I have here today is, what is the standard for the design and evaluation of immersive VR learning environments in education. Well, what we're proposing through my poster um, is really a framework for the evaluation and design of the VRLE. It is the textual didactic autodidactic model. Um, and it's really looking at the three domains, 
factual meaning psychomotor, didactic the, is the cognitive, and the autodidactic, which is the affective level. So really, the body, the mind, and the soul. So the methodologies used um, for each of the domains for measurements, uh, for textual is the experience sampling method, for didactic is the pre and post interviews and performance data, and for autodidactic will be interviews. And really, the, the demand for VR across many industries is really growing exponentially, but really in an attempt to prevent the technology from being relegated to just another novelty. You know, um, what we need to do is to make sure that as we further develop the technology, um, we should have very sound references and models to guide those developments. And I hope that the TDA framework can become that standard. So if there are any more questions, I'm happy to take them during the Q&A. Thank you. Thank you. So uh, we have listened to uh, uh, all the three uh, speakers. Now I'd like to open the floor to everyone. Uh, as I said, it's uh, a sort of an online version of a poster discussion. So I will, uh, I will give priority to people who like to uh, speak out. So you just unmute yourself. If you don't want to speak out, of course, you can also type uh, questions in the chat room. Anyone? Uh, maybe I start with uh, a question for Yilin first, while we are waiting for uh, questions uh, from the others. But Yilin, uh, uh, for your project, yeah. uh, what, what is exactly uh, in the package? The VR you talk about, is it a light, uh, Professor Chen? It is a, a 360 video, or what, what, so what's exactly in, in the package? Okay, um, the project I actually did on, we actually created um, a VR courseware. It's actually um, 360 images. So where we actually uh, stitched it together into a full um, 360 video, which can be accessed through you know, laptops, uh, VR headgear, mobile phones, with just a URL link. So the project actually we were, I was focusing on um, how to provide training for event logistics area, because you know many a times in events industry, um, you may not be able to gain access to every single location and venue, and in events industry you actually need. Um, hands-on training to make it easier for you to understand, which it may not be able, which although there is on-job training available, but um, it's not necessarily uh, readily available for everybody. Okay. So with the soft, uh, with the courseware, which we actually did up, they, they actually get to, um, uh, they actually get to experience things uh, such as you know how how warehouses are like, how they are supposed to you know label the things, where they're how they're supposed to stack the things up in a safe manner and things like that. Mm -hmm. So all these were um actually included in the three sixty uh. So sounds like there will be uh, some questions here and there as well, right? Mm, correct. Okay. So is uh the uh it will actually be a learning. It's actually a learning material. After each of the, no, after the entire, uh, after they view through the entire thing, there will actually be quiz behind for them to actually, uh, try on. Right. Well, mm. How did you use it? Is uh in the class or you uh send it out as self learning uh packages? Uh, uh okay, or... because it can actually be accessed through a URL link. Oh, so you know, actually you can just send out the link, and anyone with the link can actually access it. And what kind of equipment they need in order to uh, get to it? Uh, we actually oh. used um, a Xiaomi 360 camera. Yeah. So, uh, so that, that one is you, the, the, the developer need that. But how, I mean, what, what, do, what kind of equipment do the students use in order to... Uh... Oh, we, oh, we borrowed, um, we borrowed a mini sphere camera from our school. We actually borrowed the camera and then uh, 
we filmed it also yeah. around the school because uh, due to COVID, we were unable to actually yeah, film yeah. an actual event. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. we actually staged up. Uh, we actually staged up the scenes for the. Yes. For the video. That's itself. the making of the package. Correct. And how then, about the uh, using of the package? Any, the using of it is it? really just um. URL. Oh yes, it, it's not. Yeah, it's, it's just. Do not wear, uh, need to wear. A no, you don't VR have glass. to. Uh, okay, it is available. You can use it through the headgear. Mm. But it's not uh necess it's not mm. compulsory. You can actually just view it on your laptop or a mobile phone. I see, I see. Okay. Yeah. So long as you have the URL link, you can actually just access it. Right. So I see a, a question in the chat room. Uh for Jonathan, why did you choose this particular TDA framework as opposed to other framework? Okay, um, thanks for the question. Oh, Kenan. Yes. Kenan, yeah. Uh when I, I've been developing um, various VR applications for the last uh, year, and um, I found that there were some frameworks out there, but never a framework that encompassed all um, the different domains. Um, so what I found was we needed actually to have a one good centralized dom um, framework that people could all refer to. It was a little bit scattered, just almost like how the VR research is today. It's all over the place because a lot of people are coming in at different stages and different levels and different places. Um, I felt that we needed to look at a single framework that could capture um, all the areas from the textual to the didactic and autodidactic as well. Um, so what I did was I referenced some of the existing um, uh, kind of known frameworks in specific areas. Uh, did some additional uh, alterations based on my, my own testing and experience and came up with this um, uh, one single framework. I think it's what we need for the industry is to um, almost to have a single point where we can set a standard um, and so that everything, um, when everybody comes out and rolls out the content, uh, there is um, a standard to pack um, the content too. Because I came from traditional content development in the media sector and there was never a standard. So you had a lot of uh, content coming in and that uh, does create a lot of distraction if there's no uh, one single standard to follow. So I guess uh, your standards can be used by our other speakers as well. Since yes, they we, are, they we are hope so. Yes. A lot of, yeah. Yeah, we hope so. uh, by the way, I also welcome uh, the, the speakers uh, talk, uh, ask questions to each other, right? As make it uh, like a real uh, posters discussion. So any uh, questions from the floor? Uh, just unmute yourself if you uh, have any uh, questions, big or small. Uh, how about uh, Professor Chen? Uh, your uh, trip sounds uh, like a lot of preparation work. And uh, you also mentioned that the COVID has some influence, has, some, uh, has affected this somehow. And so how, how would you say uh, that what the COVID has made you, uh, has, has it made any changes to your plan or do you have something new now? because of the uh, pandemic. Yeah, thank you, Professor Lam. I, uh, <clears throat> yes, the, the, the VR platform and the AR2 that I have developed, uh, they, they are actually the products of, um, uh, uh, well, they're actually the outcome due to the pandemic. Yeah, because uh, in geography education oh, and right. also um, uh, tourism studies, uh, we usually arranged um, um, on-site, um, you, know, you know, physical travel field trips uh, to different um, you know, sites in Hong Kong or sometimes even outside Hong Kong. Uh, but because of the pandemic, we have this, um, the uh, restrictions in uh, of social distancing and also um, you know, different um, you know, health and safety concerns, etc. So we cannot, uh, we couldn't arrange uh, the field trips. So uh, instead, we have to turn everything online uh, you know, to um, uh, in order to 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 uh, allow these students to access to the, um, you know our lectures and activities, so without field trips, we believe that um, the uh, our courses 
uh, uh, would be you know, less interesting. So therefore, uh, with the help of the um, teaching grant, uh, we try to, uh, you know, theme, um, you know, uh, our usual, uh, you know, sites or investigation of the field trips. And, um, you know, we chose in Tianzi Island, in Saikong, in Hong Kong, um, uh, because it is an island with different uh, 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 interesting features and also uh, uh, a site that uh, we uh, where we usually uh, went there for um, you know uh, looking at tourism, looking at community based uh, development, etc. So we uh, turn the real on site field trip into a virtual um, uh, version, and then during the online lecture, uh, you know, in one of the lectures, we make it as a kind of uh, virtual immersive experience for the students, so that uh, they can actually go to. Uh, this kind of virtual field trips at home uh, individually using their own uh, device like um, iPad, like um, a tablet or a laptop computer, et cetera. They can, actually, they can also use uh, their smartphone um, as uh, uh, the viewer of that uh, virtual platform. So and what before, if the pandemic goes away? Do you still use it or you actually ask them to go out instead? Uh, yes. we. Um, we did have another site uh, of VR platform um, uh, uh, that we uh, also used it during in-class teaching because we cannot arrange so many uh, different field trips. So we selectively uh, arrange those um, um, field trips with, these, with these travel, but we can add one or more uh, sites where we can um, you know, use the virtual platform for the students in class to um, you know, uh, allow them to use this um, uh, um, um, experience in, in uh, during the class, we have prepared some like three D glasses uh, for them to use in class. So that uh, that means the students could um, you know uh, learn more when they are even in at home or uh, when they are not uh, going outdoor. Right, right. So still, even after the pandemic, it still be very useful because they can't go out all the time, right? I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We can have more I go to all the different places. Yes. But well, we have a very interesting question in the chat room. So they uh, were very, very I would like to know okay. more about the technology side. Mm. So could you uh, explain a bit how, uh, what kind of software, what kind of tools, etc., mm. uh, that that you use in making uh, your packages? So uh, Jonathan, do you uh, you have a evaluation framework, but have you uh, made developed any? Uh, uh, VR packages. Do you have anything to share about software and tools? Yeah, um, there are actually a lot of um, options out there. Unfortunately, one of my favorite, which is the easiest um, way to get into VR, is they just announced they're going to be discontinuing it. Which one? Uh, which is really Google Expeditions. Um, so it's Google Tour Creator Expeditions. It's a very popular system, especially uh, in the US with K to twelve. Um, um, we're talking about creating locations and tours. It was a very good system. Um, it was free. Still is there, going to be there until the middle of the uh, next year. And then they've announced that they've discontinued it. And I think it's kind of Google's um, take on, on, on their commitment, on their going to be no more commitment to the world of VR. But that was actually a very good uh, tool, still available, good way to get involved. Um, it really depends on your level of comfort, um, whether you are a person who's comfortable with coding. Uh, you can go into A-frame coding um, and pretty much do anything uh, to do with um, um, VR uh, tour creation. There are other softwares, um, uh, Insta VR, for example, uh, but a lot of, most of them are now, they have kind of entry-level trial systems, but most of them are now paid for um, mm -hmm. on, a, on, on a subscription basis. Uh, but there are quite a lot of platforms that are good. I'm just very disappointed that Google is divesting from the world of VR at this point. If not, th th that was a fantastic tool for educators. So uh, for the Google expeditions, what kind of uh, products you will be able to uh, make from it? So uh, basically, uh, once you are able to capture a photosphere, a VR 360 photograph, you're able to put it into basically, um, it's almost like a slideshow. And then within the slideshow, you can actually put hotspots, whether they are information, photographs, audio uh, audio tracks, for example. And then the beauty of the system was 
it was a very good system to present in a classroom environment, meaning that I could become a guide as a teacher with my iPad and my students could then log into the same tour and I'm able to instruct them. I can even see through little smiley faces where the students are looking at. So are they looking at the correct object or different object? Ooh. I can do annotations. I can do arrows and say, hey, look at this object I'm talking about. So it's a very good classroom-based um, uh, VR tool. And I think it's also, it's also dependent on what is your intention. How do you want to deploy your VR? Is it um, like an Elite system where it's kind of a self-directed one-on-one -on -one, um, VR experience? Or is it uh, something that you want to design for distribution in a classroom environment where it's one to 50 students? You know? So a lot of this, there, there's no one solution right now. Um, so a lot of it depends on what is the deployment? How do you want to uh, um, distribute your VR content? Then you find the right platform to, to um, author your content. So uh, another is to say, uh, keep asking you. <laughs> we are <laughs> looking at we are looking we are looking at instant uh, insta insta vr insta, insta vr, insta VR. Um, yeah there's also uh, other softwares like round me um uh what else that um wanda vr so these are some of the different um insta vr uh, wanda yeah. vr yes okay thank you yes. yeah so how about uh johnson can you share uh, with us uh, your the technology you use? Uh, actually, my project is not in-house. So um, it's basically uh, I, uh, an outsourcing of the production service. So um, because I'm not a you know, technical person, so I'm, I'm not sure which kind of software did uh, our um, uh, designer uh, you know, produced that VR platform. But we, um, as a team, uh, we involved in all the filming ex exercise. But for the AR, as far as I know, they use uh, a, a tool called the um, Euphoria, I think. Um, because uh, when we um, you know, uh, scan on the QR code and we download the app, uh, the app automatically show this um, name on uh, you know, the final product. So I, I suppose this is the tool uh, or the software that uh, our designer used to uh, produce the AR. So the AR means the students uh, use the app and then they, uh, the camera is on, and then they see the real world, and they also see some some of the things you design. Um, I'm sharing the PDF booklet. <laughs> yeah, the yeah. this time because the students cannot go on site, so we send them the uh, PDF booklet like this one. So they can uh, after downloading the app, they open the app and they have a, a QR code scanner uh, 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 through the app, and then on on each page there are some different themes. Uh, or topics that they can use the scanner to scan uh, to, to yeah to like a camera to place the uh, the smartphone before um, you know in front of the uh, screen of the photo for example then they can actually see uh, a, a short videos or uh, can see a 3D images of the chapel or the uh, okay. soft fields etc directly on, on on their phones. So it's a contingency plan because they are not really going there. Yeah yeah. Otherwise they will see the video on the on yeah, the yeah, yeah. We can also do some kind of geographical, um, uh, uh, you know, related kind of uh, addition to this kind of AR application because we can scan or we can we can put uh, something on, uh, on on some objects on site, for example, a house or uh, in front of the salt pan, etc. They can scan that um, you know uh, object outdoor so that they can also use the the AR. But a PDF uh, file, yes, is. It's a kind of contingency plan. Uh, I, I, I see a QR code here. Do you need to place the QR code in the in somewhere in the location? For it uh, no, the QR code is just for the downloading of um of the app. So uh, what we need is just an image or an object with a prescripted you know setting, uh, with the information like a video or an image or something else that we want to put it um you know um you know before. Uh, the use of that um, application. Right. And, and you said the students like the VR more than the AR. Uh, we we use VR? both. Yeah. To, before the lecture, we send them the VR link. And then we, 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 we try to use uh, the VR platform and view the site you know, uh, in small groups. 
uh, among the students and give them some questions for discussion. And then at the same time, I also send them the AR um, booklets so that they can download the app, um, you know, at home or whenever they want, uh, when, they, when they want to further explore the sites. Okay. Maybe the AR is not really, uh, it's a contingency hmm. arrangement. It's not, students not really going out. Uh, not at the moment, yeah. yeah. Maybe that's the reason why they like the VR yeah. a bit more. Okay. I think in the future there's potential to, to develop more on the AR parts. Yes. How about Yilin? Do you have any technical advice? Um, I'm not really a very uh, technical person. <laughs> um, but when I did my project, we actually um, actually used Wanda VR, which uh, Jonathan actually mentioned just now earlier so uh considering the fact that i'm not a very it person it is a relatively easier uh software to actually use so um that uh, it would be a good one so we uh can you uh repeat the software uh, uh wanda vr wanda vr oh i see so yeah that's one uh one jonathan of the software which jonathan mentioned earlier yeah, yeah. so it's also a, a platform for you to add 360 video uh, photos into it. Uh, yeah. Okay. So you actually include. Uh, you actually put in the um or the 360 videos there, and like what Jonathan said earlier, you can actually add in annotations, um, hotspots, and things like that. Mm -hmm. So um, notes and everything, even the quiz is done there as well. Okay. Okay. So uh, somebody uh very Lee uh, asked about learning design. Any tips? Uh, I think especially uh, the, uh, Jonathan, you have a lot of tips in your framework. <laughs> so uh, maybe it's time for you to elaborate your tips a bit more, right? So how to score higher in your, in your evaluation? What kind of VR, AR is good learning? I, I think the key is to identify um, what your core message is in the first place. Like I mentioned, a lot of the problems um, um, right now in the industry is that people believe that VR is a magic bullet. You know, just VR is going to fix every problem we have, even COVID, you know. And, <laughs> and the reality is actually VR is a whole spectrum of different tools. Um, you know, the in fact, we call it XR because it's actually extended reality. And it goes everything from reality to, ex to virtual reality. You have uh, MR in between, AR in between, and, and a whole lot of different combinations. So the key thing is to really identify what is your key message and what are you trying to, um, to deliver, right? Because the, the, the key affordances of VR are immersiveness, okay? Immersion, um, your presence, embodiment. So you need to have that type of uh, goal in the first place. If it is just to communicate a simple message, don't need VR. You can actually do it. Other, there are many, many other uh, digital means as well. You can use normal video. Some things are very good in PowerPoint charts. Some things are good in animation. But when you want to use VR, you need to understand the affordances. And really, you want to put the audience, uh, change the, 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 the role of the audience from a point of an observer to a participant, where the person now becomes embodied in the role and you cross the fourth dimension, the fourth line. In fact, the person now addresses the characters. You are now the character. And, and when, when, when things are going on in the space, you are now interacting in the space. So when you can identify what you want the learning outcome to be, do you want the person to learn um, a motor skill set? Or do you want the person to learn a certain process? Then you figure out which is the best tool within the, the, the whole spectrum of XR to use and then and then you go. So it's almost engineering it, reverse engineering it, rather than saying VR is the tool, let's use VR and create something. I think that let's start off from that point. Okay. So create with a good purpose. Yes. Right, I see. So maybe I also uh, yeah, so, okay. with um, Jonathan's point about the learning outcomes because uh, we are the instructors of the courses. So we know uh, exactly what we would like uh, the students to learn and therefore we have to, you know, um, try to immerse into the role of the students uh, to see what they might like, you know, to, what they would like to, to see um, during the VR experience and what difficulties or, you know, 
what kind of questions that they may um, face. And you know, in the whole process, we, we, we drop down all these kinds of points and then we communicate with the vendor, the service provider, the designer, so that they will technically match our expectation at the end. But the most important thing is how, and as an instructor, we can facilitate the whole process of learning. Yeah. And I think the question now in the chat room, particularly uh, we relate to you because uh, uh, very really would like to know what, how you communicate with your vendor, what kind of uh, things you have emphasized, you, want, uh, you really want vendor to do. So, uh, uh, before, um, you know, um, you know how, how to say, we, we, we prepare uh, all the materials for the vendor, um, you know, to, to guide us technically. Um, so first of all, we have what we would like to, uh, to do for a field trip. And then for the field trip, we, 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 because this is a virtual experience, so we will know the limitation and then we will know, know which sports or which exact locations uh, where we would like to have the VR images. And then in each of those locations, we uh, may add some additional activities that uh, the students can do when they are doing online lecture or when they're doing in-class lecturing. So, um, uh, at, uh, you know, with all those information, we can communicate with the vendor that, uh, uh, you know, in which aspect that they can actually help us to deliver those activities, like um, question, pop-up questions, like, uh, you know, some information linking online, uh, you know, to some uh, web pages or to some online videos that I would like the students to view, you know, apart from the uh, VR ex experience. So, so on that, yeah. Okay. So anything that the vendor is still not uh, doing that good? So any, so, or any uh, thing you have emphasized, you really want vendor to, uh, what, what are the features you, you really like to see? How did you communicate? Yeah. With I think for, for VR platform uh, is generally fine, but for, I think for AR, uh, that could be much more complicated because it involves, involves uh, like, like different versions of Androids and iOS, you know, and also different uh, okay. smartphone what, what users. Cross platform, right? That's yeah, yeah, we have tested. One vendor to do. Yeah, exactly. Okay. We have tested the, the, the tool, you know, many, many times with uh, some uh, students on campus okay. so that we can actually tackle all those uh, problems, technical problems, particularly before we, we have the final uh, uh, tools that are released. Okay. So Yilin, any uh, comment from you about uh, what you emphasize in the development uh, stage? What's the um, main design features you want to emphasize? I think for me, design emphasis really depends on uh, who your audience and things are. So uh, for mine, it was more on uh, for adult learners. So things we emphasize is actually really um, interactivity mm. you know how how they actually get to view um, view what we want them to view in the VR itself let's see so interactions so maybe it's uh, very close to uh, 250 any last question from anyone so it's uh, very very good opportunity because uh, we have three groups of people doing VR and AR. Anything in this area? Okay. Any, um, yep. Okay. <laughs> so thank you. Uh, so keep in touch. I think uh, you have uh, the common interest. So uh, also if you uh, contact the different presenters, if you want more from them. Okay, thank you for your time.